concerned about jobs or the economy or what's going on around the world. They're staring at their radio saying, get rid of click and clack. Finally, my Republican friends are doing it. Kudos to you. <laughs> so can America survive without a handout for click and clack? Joining us now from Los Angeles, Dr. Caroline Hellman, a political science professor at Occidental College. Caroline, when you see Anthony Weiner go off like this and suggest that somehow this is an attack on click and clack, do you think he's lost his mind or what? Well, no, I think he's making a very important point that we're uh, acting like this is a priority when the world is falling down around us. Um, and I would go a step further and say that um, NPR is a really important source of mainstream news. I know they're re being rebranded as being really liberal and radical, but the fact of the matter is they cover stories that no one else covers. They include viewpoints from across the political spectrum, and even conservatives and Tea Party members are coming out to defend them. So the focus on this issue, I think, is misplaced, and Representative Weiner is bringing that that topic up well i think you must have missed that videotape where you had npr's number one fundraiser said we'd be better off without federal funding well you know i'd have to disagree with him on that point i think symbolically it's very important for us as a public at, to have national funding for such a thing as npr um, it is the most trusted news source according to a recent harris poll uh, its listenership has gone up dramatically in recent years and they're truth tellers i mean that's the the question we should be asking is why are the the biggest polluters on the globe uh, or top 10 biggest polluters the Koch brothers so concerned about taking down npr and i would argue it's because they are telling some some truth that no one else is I telling. I see. And would you be similarly concerned that George Soros is putting so much money into NPR yes. from a liberal perspective? Well, yes, I would. And, and I, one, I think we would very much be in agreement about that. I would prefer that uh, funding sources for public radio and public television be less partisan. Oh, so why don't you say that, that they should just be open to advertising and go into the marketplace like Fox News and every other news organization from the New York Times to the Washington Post to the L.A. Times? Great question, Juan. I think that actually they provide something that mainstream commercial media cannot provide. They provide news that doesn't come from a corporate slant. And if you want to look at the biggest bias, well, so let is the listeners pay for it. Uh, if it's that valuable, it's valuable to you, Caroline. Why wouldn't you pay for it? Well, I do pay for it through my taxes, and that's where I, how I would like to pay for it, in addition to my individual contributions. Oh, I see. But well, wait a second. Hold on. So then you're saying it's more important in terms of your tax spending than Social Security, more important than, let's say, a, a scholarships more. for college children, more important Not than more. than the police or the fire. You, you want to have that as your priority, even at a time of fiscal constraints. Well, Juan, our fiscal constraints are the result of uh, tax cuts for the wealthy, whose wealth has been growing astronomically since the early 80s, while the middle class has remained stagnant. Oh, so uh, increase taxes have... to pay for NPR's budget. That's no, what you're saying. No, ju just restore taxes to an equitable place and we will be fine. Get out of wars we can't afford and shouldn't have been in in the first place. This, this either or doesn't make sense to me when I look at the books and I see that we're a wealthy country that can pay for everything we prioritize. Well, Unfortunately, uh, we happen to be prioritizing corporate welfare and welfare for the wealthy. Well, let me ask you something, Carol. Just from a journalistic point of view, do you think it's okay for one side or the other, for Soros or the Koch brothers, anybody, to be paying into the pot to tell NPR, here's what you have to do in order to get the money? We saw that in the videotape where NPR's fundraisers are even willing to do business with the Muslim Brotherhood. I think that's bad news. I don't think journalists should be having to work under those conditions, Caroline. Well, Juan, they did refuse the $5 million. They did vet the organization. And I actually think the video has been a bit blown out of proportion. Not only was it doctored, um, we do know from Chris Parker's research at the University of Washington that, Washington that people who identify with the Tea Party do have a greater amount of racial resentment. I happen to agree with Schiller that your comments were bigoted. Um, I think that if I uh, were to say that uh, I clutch my purse every time I walk by a black man, that might resonate with a lot of Americans. It might be their truth. But it's a bigoted statement. Now, I've, I certainly wouldn't have fired you, but I do think that there was some truth in that video that we just simply don't get to talk about because we're afraid to have actual discourse in this country. I can't believe that you just said that. You think that sim simply saying that what you think is evidence of bigotry, that all of a sudden it's as if you were walking by a black man, that would mean that you were a bigot if you were somewhat nervous. Let me just tell now, you, with the amount of black on black crime in America, I get nervous and I'm a black man. So, I mean, wait a second. Well, there we go again, Juan. I would find that to be a racial profiling. It's a bigoted comment. It's a bigoted and I would comment. Hope. As yes, I'm it the is. Father just like your comment about Muslims. Men. And I'm saying that if you saw a couple guys walking around looking like thugs down the street late at night, you're saying, oh, I'm going to not think it through. Caroline, I think you're way off base, but look, thanks for coming in. We so appreciate it greatly.